The Professors is brought to you by BlackBorder.com. They've got everything from pro player articles, competitive prices, podcasts, pro tour coverage, videos, and even a point system they're already for just posting on the site. We've got new members joining every day, new features being added and updated. So go check out BlackBorder.com today. Very bomb laden ends up being like who draws their their best card first. A lot of cards just win the game, like overrun and fireball or advanced player angel. And if you don't have the bombs or like you don't have the removal for their bombs, it's just you just get behind so fast. The spread in value between the player's best card in their deck and the worst card in their deck is much greater than the average format. More than half the bombs aren't really permanents. They're cards like Fireball and Earthquake and Overrun. Because of the switch to six boosters, you end up with a higher degree of variance. I would say skill definitely plays a role if you look at the players who made day two. I think there's a substantial amount of luck, mostly in opening the cards. I personally think it takes a little bit of the, the skill edge that some better players have out. You're playing a creature, 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 and it's a creature war. If anything, the problem is just that it's too small. The same comments repeat, like knowing the green decks, you know, either have a giant growth or they don't. Luck. If you open up two Bane Slayers, you're going to win. Been a lot. For lower level players, I'm not sure whether I include myself in that group, I would say the playing is more important. People often forget that you build the deck because of the way you intend to play the deck. People will often, especially nowadays, take someone else's deck and play it not understanding why someone made the choices they made until they played a lot of games. Most of your players should be self-explanatory. So sealed, I guess you just have to get there, you know? Slayer Angel. In the abstract, Bane Slayer Angel. I would say in actuality, I think it may be mind control. A lot of people say Bane Slayer Angel. I think the best common is uh, Merfolk Looter. Overrun? Overrun. Because so many games go to that mid-game stall I mentioned. You know, you both have a bunch of like two fours and one threes and you know some four fours and you cast Overrun and the game ends. Hey, overrun. Magma Phoenix, that's all like I, I mean, everyone knows it's a good card, but I like, got wrecked by it yesterday. Like, just the fact you can bring it back any time, like, you don't know if they have a trick or they're bringing back Magra Phoenix. Chandra. She's a reusable removal spell, basically. Sleep. It'll give you two turns to win with your guys, or if you're behind, it'll give you two turns to catch up. Bane Slayer Angel feels like the most stupid to me. Sleep and Overrun are require you to have some semblance of a board. Probably Whisper So Cloak. With giant growth, now like if you have two two twos, you know, the guy can't put damage on his tech of giant growth. If you giant growth, then you can unsummon, you actually gain a lot more from it. Instead of unsummoning your own creature, you unsummon theirs. It made Vampire Aristocrat go from very good to quasi unplayable. There's gonna be weird situations where you both yield and you both didn't want to yield. Yeah, I played on summon multiple times because there's a lot of enchantments and looking or druids and other similar things going on, plus it's just still a decent track. I think there might be a bit more skill, but I really can't say definitively. I'm not a big fan of, they're not part of the game. If you have a biased spectator, they're more likely to bring something up that benefits their friend. It doesn't give an unfair advantage, it just allows people who may be like caught up in the spur of the moment to remember something. That's mostly for people who don't really know what they're doing and they need a reminder. Cyborg notes are really nice. I, I take notes during game one, you know, just writing down any other spells, tricks. It's horrendous in terms of the impact there. I mean, it's not big, though. I mean, clearly, this is sort of one of the areas where if you net deck and you don't know what you're doing, you know, you don't have a chance really to memorize every single card that goes in and out against every deck. You might be able to memorize the best two or three matchups and that's how they do, but you certainly can't memorize the obscure fourth matchup, fifth matchup, sixth matchup, and yeah, it's definitely an advantage because the guy who's been playing this deck for, for three weeks and built it himself knows exactly why the cards are in the sideboard, knows exactly why think, what things are for. The guy looking for a sideboard for the second time has no idea. I played Mono Black. I had like three Doom Blades, three Assassinates, two Tendrils. I like Mono Black, slashing probably red. Blue's still really good. I like blue very much, but because at the high table I expect it to be overdrafted, which I think it was. Green, blue. I think blue is really powerful. It seems underrated. Black, blue, or blue, white, Murphil Gluter, and Snappy Drink and Essence Scatter are all really, really good cards. I don't really like the soldier theme. The white's still 
probably the best color for its nice amount of commons and uncommons in the set. And I try to avoid green if at all possible. The cards are conditional answers. I was just at the feature match area and looking at my deck and the three other decks, uh, it looked like two of the four decks at the area were three color. So I think it's very possible you can splash for Lightning Bolt. I think it is not correct to take Lightning Bolt most of the time because red isn't deep enough. You got Bolt and Seismic Strike and then like a five mana four four that has to attack each turn and like a three mana two one first strike and then it just dips off the Lightning Elementals and, and you know, relatively mediocre commons. Mono red is actually really sick when you get it because nobody drafts red. So like I'll end up with decks with like four or five Fiery Hellhound to like a couple of Kindle Furies. There's no reason you can't succeed with any of the five colors. For some reason, I'm thinking like dinosaurs. I guess dinosaurs would be neat. Maybe like vampires. They seem to be pretty popular right now. The Aztec Maya theme. I really want it to be a poison set. I mean, it wants to be something different, and that's obviously very hard to do. Find something that matters, that hasn't mattered before. Dinosaurs right now, from the what the text looks like. You know, I don't know. Pirate Ninja Zombies would be the best. That tonight's gonna be a good night. I certainly strongly urge them not to repeat so quickly. You know, at least, I mean, I would say I expressed a lot of concern that they were leaning on gold way too much and tribal probably too much. I think that we found out what too much gold looks like and it's called Alara. We're seeing these decks that are complete bastardizations of all that is wholly about the color pie and about any kind of normal casting cost. Like most things, you know, if you order pizza, it's really good. Everyone loves pizza. But if you order pizza, you know, today, and then you order pizza on Tuesday, and then you order pizza on Thursday, and you order pizza on Saturday, pretty soon you're going to say, oh, I'm going to stick a pizza. That tonight's going to be a good night. That tonight's going to I got Ant Queen first and, like, some green and some blue, and then, you know, Ant Queen and Levitation's pretty great. And I, op I opened Earthquake Pack 3, and I added two Borderland Rangers and a Rampant Growth, and I was like, I'm splashing this Earthquake. And then I got the Shivan passed to me next, and I was like, I'm splashing for this, too. I have no idea, man. This hasn't even sunk in yet. Like, I, I'm like kind of like speechless. It feels great. Like, it feels great. They put the trophy on the table at the end of the finals, and like, I hadn't been nervous all weekend, and they put it down, and I just got real nervous. I'm like, there was a point, were you watching the last match? He, he mind rotted me and I had negate mana open, but I just discarded my negate and a merfolk looter because I was so distracted by this thing. I'm kind of rambling, I'm still like in shock.